first episode of Ebbs and Flow, so pumped for it. I uh, played with Marty back in the day at 20s, bit of a troublesome kid back then. <laughs> but he's turned around, and Jai's always been a pleasure to hang around with on the piss, so let's dive into the podcast. It's going to be a goodie. Oh, let's go. Froth him like a dog. Yeah. Give me the ball. Is it hiding the ringworm? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't exactly a right decision. Oh, I feel like I should go to rehab. It's pretty fun. He sort of changed the way, you know, I think about life. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows, the ins and outs, fairs and doubts on and off the field. First of all, thank you to our brand new partner, Sporting News Australia, for putting this production together. Joined, to, joined today by a couple of good friends of mine, or a good friend of mine, parted with him a couple of times, but Jai Arrow, Liam Knight. Thanks for jumping on, boys. That flowed very well, the intro. Very yeah. well done. That's a, that's an orchestrated uh, oh. practice in the mirror. <laughs> well, oi, oi, I literally practiced that this morning. Really? That's, yeah. that's good. In the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, just going on a bit of a walk with the dog and just going, <laughs> welcome back to the ebbs and flows. 3 a.m.? Yeah. Nah, 3.30. Oh, yeah, sleep <laughs> Boys, thanks for jumping on. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, Thank mate. You. Thanks for having us. Um, South's boys, obviously, in a bit of form right now. You guys have been close a couple of years. Is there something different about your team this year? From an outsider looking in, I'm watching you and I'm going fuck, these guys are starting to look all right. Can you feel something different about your team? Yeah, definitely. I think it more comes down to just we're all having fun together. Um, you know, guys, especially going from Redfern to Heffron, you know, we will sort of pr not promise, but they said that the facility should have been done maybe last year in November or pre-season, um, you know, sort of times. But, you know, just everyone's walking in with a smile. We're all having fun together and we're just turning up for each other. That's, you know, the main things why I reckon we're, we're doing so well, but it's a very long season. Yeah, for sure. Um, you guys' new facility, obviously a club that's been around for such a long time, to really have a home like that now, like what's the big difference that you notice? Like you go there and just excited to be there? You get sunlight when you walk in the train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it, eh? You may nah. actually sort of walk in the train and when we first went in there, I was in the gym looking out, like smiling. I was like, wow, oh, that's what it's like to be a trainer and like, see light <laughs> what is no, sometimes light? you go to train in the morning it'll be sunny you leave it's raining you get like three shades of different you know weather and you don't even know what's going on you walk <laughs> out fuck what do we all wear you don't know but ringworm no, so. everywhere in redford Bro, really in uh, station proper. of ringworm proper everyone was once a week someone would pop up with ringworm mainly him who are you the worst <laughs> are you ground zero <laughs> nah, tommy b tommy b he's right got here, a tasmania on his, on his neck <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, no, but, yeah, sorry no, about but that. But. I will say to him, he's not an unhygienic person. It's just generally he's not very diligent he uses on the, cream. the cream. He just no, he's not diligent with the application. <laughs> no, nah, he is. <laughs> just I like one day here, one day there. Just refuses to go away on it. I don't know why. I feel sorry for him. Big salami neck. How do you get ringworm? Like, how does that even start? I don't know where it starts. It's just like it's. I don't know what it is. I've never had it before with the house. And I've never seen no one. I've never had one point at the club, but no one's got. Someone's got it at all times. Yeah, yeah. it's fucked. First time I never knew about it. The first year at South, and someone said, "You got a ring." I said, "Fuck's a ring?" <laughs> and obviously, I've learned about ring. it. So I've done my, <laughs> done my, um, what would you do? I've done my research on it. And there's carriers and there's people who get it. So there's a lot of carriers that don't get it, and. That's why people They're the get insurgents. It, yeah. Oh, almost like like coronavirus. Yeah, you yeah. can be the host but not yeah. have symptoms. Don't yeah. have symptoms. Yeah, yeah, crazy Sneaky little snakes. Just <laughs> shit. I don't have it now, by the way. You got it? Proud of, no, no, proud of you, man. <laughs> don't be. You've got it. <laughs> I've had it before. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anyway, Heffron, clean, it's clean center. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I made a big deal of it too. Right. Yeah. G give us your top three. Who's got the most caps of ringworm in your team? <laughs> you're, <laughs> nah. you're in the top three. You're three. Three. No, I'm very clean though. Yeah. You fold things like you're tidy. You're not clean. No, I'm clean. <laughs> um, uh, Tommy be another. Two. Tommy's just unlucky. Peter Mamazoulis, number one. <laughs> oh, young fella. Patient, yeah, number, yeah, hooker. patient zero. Mate, his hygiene can, <laughs> is very questionable. <laughs> boys in like Gold Coast, you sort of found out a lot about the boys. <laughs> yeah. Like, apparently, I mean, he's like lives at home. Mum and dad did everything for him. He didn't he had a dirty pillowcase or some shit. Didn't know how to do anything about it. Put a, no, a shirt on it. No. Put a shirt yeah. over it, wasn't it? He put a shirt over a pillow <laughs> with his <laughs> missus scent, <laughs> with his missus perfume. That's <laughs> <laughs> no word for lie. Because he was homesick. He had like 40 towels like in the corner. They're dirty. Didn't know what to do with them. Didn't know how to give them the, the, the hotel oh, he staff. Had ice cream. His, his room ice was cream stuck to like the bedside table. Oh, yeah. Living at a home first time was just like crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> the old t-shirt over the pillow. <laughs> That's the best. 
So yeah, Jai three, Tom two, Pete one. Um, talk about, talk us on. about your coach. He seems like a pretty cool guy. Seems pretty relatable. We'll talk about your personal experiences pretty soon. But what about from a professional standpoint? Had Wayne Bennett there before, obviously the goat, and then you get JD to come through. What's some clear differences between the two boys? There's well, definitely a lot. Uh, well, not a lot, sorry. There's a, a lot of similarities in ways, but you know, Wayne was more a father figure. Uh, I suppose everyone would probably say that openly. He's more of a father figure where JD was more he is more hands-on tacti tactically. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, he's also a good fella to talk to and um, he'll always talk to you about what's going on outside of footy as well and how you're doing mentally, um, physically and stuff like that. But he's just so smart and um, like Wayne as well, similarities, he doesn't really expect you to do anything out of the you know ordinary just expects you to be on every day, um, be the best possible version of yourself on and off the field. So, um, as I said, mate, there's a lot of similarities, but they have a lot of differences as well. And even with Wayne coaching, um, he was more hands-on with us with the tactical sides of things and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. What about you? What's your... Yeah, I think JD's really, really smart guy, like tactically and um, the way he approaches the game was different, but he definitely like took a lot out of Wayne, like the, his, you know, his relaxed approach and, and giving players more downtime, more of a voice and, and like, you know, that sort of incorporation between player and staff. It wasn't like, you know, a dictator, like he really takes on what the senior players say and really yeah. wants the boys to have a voice and feel heard and... Um, <clears throat> yeah, speaking of what, what Wayne and him probably they brushed off on each other a little bit. Yeah, he was mm. always adult, like, he was always our tactics coach when Wayne was there. Wayne didn't even know our plays, but yeah. Who runs your guys? Who runs your guys' attack? Because it's fuck, it's pretty to watch. Benny Hornby. Benny. Benny oh, Hornby. is that? Is he? Yeah. Weapon, yeah. He's smart as man. He was, I feel like even when he was playing, he was a very underrated attacking player. Benny? Just nice and yeah. square right out the back to Darius yeah. Boyd, yeah. and Darius would just yeah, strip Benny him. Hornby yeah. Right out. Yeah. So what, what's the sort of strategy? Obviously, you don't want to give away too much details, but I see you guys sort of play like sort of post to post, move the middle around. Obviously, with your um, Lockie Ilias here now, he's opened up that right side attack for you, but you guys are a left side dominant team. Like, what's the strategies behind that? And I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's come from two middle forwards. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the edge uh, sometimes, yeah, mate, We'll right? hit the points, no, we, boys, and then I, we'll I, have them having the points. I think it's everyone sort of knowing their role. We have, we have shape coming from literally, we know our roles from every part of the field you know from a scrum line we've got a shape we we have to run or we want to run we know our roles there and um for us where we need to lead um inside or run a lead inside um we've got shape from you know we call it a zone from you know basically from the scrum line to the post just inside yeah that sort of just no, the man's, of the six yeah, four no splits. man's land yeah. and we got shape from 50 as well i think it's just it comes down to us knowing our role and where um, we know we need to lead inside or where we're ball playing from. So uh, we have shape, honestly, as I said, we've got shape from every Everywhere. part of the field where we can play footy. So that's probably the, you know, the most exciting thing about us. I think the most exciting thing you touched on, like we're left side dominant. I think we've scored more tries than the right. Have you? I, I don't know. Stretcher scored 11 himself or something like that. Yeah. Like something crazy. AJ's like yeah. three or four, you know, for some guy that's scoring a try a game for fun. Stretcher's, um, he's gone from like, he's always been good. Mate. But like this year, he's sort of gone up to there. <laughs> It's, yeah, I don't know. He's a freak. He's a freak. What is it? What is it? Can't can't put your finger on it. Is he training like a little bit different? No, he's always been. <clears throat> he's one of those guys. Every training session, you know, he's ripping in. He's he's carving up and he's giving everything. But I don't know. A bit older, a bit bigger, a bit more confidence. I don't know what it is because I think last year he was unlucky to not get an origin yeah. spot. Will he get uh, in this year? Sure, oh, no, he, he has, has to. to he has to. Yeah, he, he's been big frame. I loves them carry. Like, he's, you know, like those ten meter carries that no one wants. He's sitting there just frothing like a doll. Yeah. Like, Give me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> he's yeah. been knocking. He's it's been sick. knocking on that door for years now. Yeah, a few years now. I reckon he's at the he's at the stage now where he's he's about to knock the fucking thing down, mm. and they can't say no to him. I don't. I feel as though they can't. Yeah, I think you have to size him up for that blue jersey already. Wing he's centre, built for defensively. He played, he's been a winger for three years. He's been a centre for two or three years. I reckon he's the best defensive centre in the comp at the Come moment. He's locked down, eh? He locks him down, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that best <laughs> defender? I always G, G Mark because he's a big frame. Mate, you better be careful how you tackle. You'll be in the second row soon. You just yeah. fuck off. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. He was struggling yesterday. He was a bit cooked yesterday. I kept <laughs> having to ask him if he was, if he was okay. He told me to fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. Um, instead of seeing Lachlan Elias' game, like coming to the comp nice and steady, um, you see him starting to take a bit more control. You've got some pretty dominant guys in your team with Luttrell, Cody and, and Cookie. 
like the pressure isn't always there on him to run the team, but I feel mm. like he's sort of taking that step up. What's some things you've seen, some characteristics you've seen within him that's helped him grow to take his game to this next little level? Starting to have a voice, mm. like really speak up and have his opinions on how he wants us to play and stuff like that in meetings. Like I feel like his first full year last year, he wouldn't really speak up in meetings about say tack defensively, but he's starting to do that. No, sort of noticed that over the past couple of weeks, he's actually speaking up and having his say, whether um, having his say and not having the the older boys and Cody Latrell's um, cookie as well. Cookie's always got something to say. <laughs> he's always got something to say. They all, they, they, all those things are, are they are they good yeah. things or not? No, uh, no <laughs> cookie, yeah. man, cookie, no. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's half half. Cookie, I've noticed. If he doesn't Cookie have something more. to say, he'll be judging someone that is talking. You see his face and looking around, like trying to find eyes to like oh, try and make a laugh. Okay. Or he'll just judgmental repeat. thing ever. He'll repeat what someone's just said. He's good at that. That's the worst. Yeah, yeah. he's well, good. Tommy, Tommy B. Tommy B. He's like he's Tommy's <laughs> funny, but Tommy's good for someone morale. will say something and he will repeat that exact thing, almost exactly <laughs> the same as what they said, and act like he's the one that said it, and look around for like, and everyone just like laughs hysterically. <laughs> he's like. Someone says, something. anyone else got something to say? Everyone looks at Tom. Tom, yeah. anything? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, yeah but Lockie's, Lockie's really coming into his own. He's mm. you know, taking the team, um, as, as we always knew he would, but we knew it was going to take him some time. And thought to the back end of last year, he was really taking, um, taking a stance and um, taking pressure off Cody and Luttrell and, and Cookie. So, and even Camo as well, who mm. was a ball playing 13. He really took pressure off those blokes and, I think he's taken a lot of pressure off them to start this year. And um, it's crazy to think we're almost halfway through the season because um, we're in round, what, 10 or 11 now. Mm -hmm. And Lockie's really starting to find his own and have his voice. I think that's the more, most important thing that he's taken on is just he's really having a voice and a say. Cam Murray, he can't be that perfect, can he? Is he, is he that guy? Unicorn, bro. <laughs> We've said it. We'd love to be in his head just for a day. Yeah, I, always, I actually asked him one time because he's always just thinking. Like, he's a deep thinker. And he gets in the train and he's like those wide eyes and he's just not talking to people for a little <laughs> bit. He's thinking. And I asked him, I go, mate, when you come to train, like, what are you thinking about? Yeah. He's like, oh, he gets sort of like, <laughs> gets a bit like, oh, oh nothing. No, 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 just like footy. And, uh, oh, not yeah. much. Oh, we reckon it's money. Like, yeah, it's money. <laughs> he's money. money driven. I don't know why. He's it's just not trying even to joke, figure right? out how to make yeah. more money. Like, mate, how much do you need? <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. Pretty handy pickup with Jackie Wyden. Yeah. That's pretty Absolutely. handy. Some, some salary crap questions come, suddenly mate, come in around sales. Yeah, I think oh, we're pretty good at it, yeah. <laughs> the, are you a Roosters fan? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the projection? I don't know. Who do we got? <laughs> all off yeah, the cap, know. bro. We're all right. Under the cap, you're under the cap, but what about uh, the probably no, third you guys party cash payments? You guys don't have to answer if you don't want to, but where does he fit in? Because you, he center, center. That's, I think that's well, the young fella's going good too. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's a, a fullback. It's honestly a really good question and something we haven't. It hasn't even JD's even said it. Has, it's not spoken about where he's going to play. It's, probably put him anywhere. He's a bit of he's um, gun more anywhere. about us this year. Yeah, and that's more worry about that next year, but. I was going to say, like, where he'd fit in. He sounds Yeah, like it'd, it'd have to be. Uh, I think Lockie's obviously doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody's, Cody's Cody. Cody. Cody would probably, probably kick stones if he Cody. got <laughs> shafted from his sixth position. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where would he go? So, yeah. um, is it easier to strip down, like, attack and stuff when you guys got 14 players on the field? <laughs> That was him too. No, no, no. no. That was, was it? him too. <laughs> no, oh, no. Salty. I can say that actually wasn't me. I got the blame only because I was in the picture. Yeah. Um, I vividly, I know for a fact, I had card number three and Junior, I think it was Junior. No, Junior wasn't even playing. Didn't the trainer try to spray you for it though? He didn't want to take accountability. Who's, whose fault is that? Is that trainer's fault? Yeah. Trainer. Well, he it, pointed, it changed person pointing as well. on these ones. I'm not point. I don't want to point fingers, but you got to bl not blame. It, sorry, if it wasn't that's your the fault. Like if not pointing fingers, but whose fault was that? The interchange person. Like that's the, isn't that their job? Oh, the NRL guy. Yeah, yeah to make do. sure that you know someone's come <laughs> off. But really, that wasn't going to change the result. Really. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Junior. I know for a fact Junior had come off, and I had the number three card, and I went on, and I think our trainer had said, um, "Davy, go on, just go on." And then obviously Davy had gone on, but Tommy was taking the carry, and Tommy was running off while Davey was sort of running towards the play. Mm. Uh, I got the blame for it no bearing, again. No bearing on the game though. But thanks for the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how much do boys get fined or how much the club get fined? It was 10 G, eh? Hey? Oh, that's all right, eh? Yeah. Hey? Scorch a couple of tries with 14 guys on the field. <laughs> Did anything happen when they had the 14? Like yardage carries, <laughs> mate. 
Um, very naughty, obviously. Um, welcome back to first grade football. It's been a tough sort of nine months for you. Talk about the sort of injury from the first day you got it and um, some of the tough times you went through getting back to last weekend. Yeah, injury, man. Um, I remember... Lowest tackle. Lowest Holy tackle, shit. And I have you, how many times have you watched it? Was I couldn't watch it for a while. I, I used to just sit there and just fucking just burn inside. Like, I couldn't watch it and I had to deal with that. For Do you know the dude's bit. name and stuff? Like, no, is that, no oh, idea. No. Um, it was a wing up, bro. <laughs> That's the, that's the thing that that's the worst the thing about it. I was in the middle of the field, <laughs> <laughs> tackled, like, tackled two off. Like we had a tap, then I had to carry, and I was on post, almost black dot. And I got and I looked at, it, I was like, is that number two? What the fuck's he doing there? <laughs> and I was just laying in the, in the in the rain, just like looking up, like what? My knee, my knee was gone. What what did you do to your knee? What was the extra injury? ACL, MCL, um, grade two MCL, almost tore that all completely. But ACL and then a little bit of meniscus. Oh okay. Yeah, I just remember rain in the rain, just going, fuck me. Like, and then obviously the, the weeks and months, of, maybe about a month after that, like that followed, I just went like, I'd worked so hard to get back there. I had like three surgeries in the off season, like Rico, Rico, clean out. And I like just started to feel like I got a bit of momentum back in the side, playing all right, <laughs> bang. And I just yeah, I lost a bit, you know, lost a bit of myself. And um, the last nine months have been a bit of a journey, man. Yeah. What, what do you mean by you lost yourself? Like, what does that mean? I had attached my whole identity to football. Like that was what I wanted to do, and like I didn't. I had blinkers on, you know, the football bubble. I guess you've been there for a little bit as well. Um, nothing else really mattered to me. Like I didn't, and I didn't care about. You know, I I didn't think obviously football was going to end. I was like, I'll figure that out one day. And so my my life was like ninety five percent football, and everything outside of that, I just attached myself to the image of football, my identity, and that was gone. I was like, well, what do I do now? Who am I? Like all these like weird questions, like big questions I just hadn't asked, and um, I didn't really want the answer. I just sort of you know started partying and, and got a bit lost in that scene. Yeah, um, obviously, like I've known you for a while, and you've always been like the light, fun guy. Obviously, you're fucking six foot five or six, so you sort of stand out. I've always found in the past when there's guys that always seem happy up front, they're always masking things behind. Yeah, Would going through that journey of an ACL injury, did it start to dig up like sort of childhood trauma and, and everything yeah. else in between? Where, like, cause, like, like I said, my, all my memories of Naughty are just fun. Like, we go out, party, have fun, talk shit. Uh, do do what we do, but like like I said, like there's times you've been opened up to me personally. Was that kind of like the explosion moment for you? Yeah, and that was when a lot of things bubbled up when I didn't have that that solid base of football, you know, training routine, all that kind of stuff. All that childhood trauma, all that stuff, sort of bubbled to the surface. And especially when I just kept going further and partying, and all that kind of stuff, mask trying to mask it, and then it just wouldn't work anymore. Um, that was the biggest thing I had to address. Like I did a lot, a lot of therapy. Still am like just addressing a lot of stuff that came up and that was probably the biggest work on. There's a weird stigma around therapy, especially for men. Well, we look at, like I look at you two guys and like big solid guys and you play at such a tough sport and you're seen as almost like a gladiators or men in the arena and we're expected to be tough and put together all the time. What was it like making yourself so vulnerable, vulnerable in public and then sitting down and having those tough conversations with, with someone in therapy? Yeah, I sort of, that stigma left me a little bit when I was in rehab, to be honest. Like, I got stripped, fuck, I was stripped back pretty bad. I mean, after like the state I was in to go in there, like, it wasn't exactly a light decision. Oh, I feel like I should go to rehab. It's pretty fun. That sounds yeah. fun. Like, so I sort of lost a lot of that stigma. And um, like you said, like, oh, I can't talk about feelings and all that other shit that sort of come along with it that probably contributed to me bottling a lot up and, um, and escaping that way. But uh, it was pretty freeing, to be honest. Like, it was... When it all came out, when the story hit, it was like pretty, uh, just the vulnerability was really sat with me in a weird way. People messaged me like, oh, congrats. I was like, oh, fuck, now people know. I was like, I want to throw my phone away. People were sending me nice messages, but I was like, fuck, now it's out. Like, it was really Yeah. Um, but was that was, a good thing, though, that it was out? You felt yeah, way harder? Yeah, I felt free. And saying that, I got people like messaging me saying, like, mate, you've given me like hope and inspiration, like, go through the therapist, stop drinking, mm -hmm. go do That's this, right. stop taking drugs. And I was like, that was overwhelming, <laughs> like, feeling of like, wow, like, if I can help any person, like, with just talking about what I've been through, like, it's a pretty amazing feeling. Mm. What was rehab like? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, was, I was about to laugh too. Do <laughs> you know what? It's just a weird story, stigma bro. around I rehab. Want, I want him to tell you a story about <laughs> how Which one he it? tried to get no nah, about how he tried to get himself kicked out. Bro, I could imagine him too being too proud. Oh, but I was like, yeah, I was it's like, like two, two weeks in, pretty deep in this, and like, <laughs> uncovering some deep shit about me, and everyone was passing around vapes. I was like. Vapes are banned. <laughs> like I got caught with one. I don't even vape, but I was just like stressed in there. And the head of the rehab, he's like, mate, give me the vape. And I was like, want to give it to him like that? And I went like, <laughs> right in front of him. And he's just like blowing up. And I was like, kick me out. What are you gonna do? <laughs> 
<laughs> he was like, fuck, he knew that's what I wanted. But rehab was pretty crook, man. It was hard. It was hard work. Single. How long were you in there for? Four weeks. Shit. So he like going and staying and everything? Twenty eight days, yeah. First eight days, no phone. They'd take your phone yeah. off, yeah. Take yeah. Corny one. You, like, you didn't have a phone, did you? No, I took it in, yeah, but you know, you don't have it. Like they take it, and you yeah, have to yeah, ask yeah. for it, like to. So I was getting random and... Facetimes oh, off yeah, this yeah. like email, going, "What the fuck is? Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> who is trying to Facetime me?" And then yeah. I got a message, and it was obviously him. <laughs> yeah, it was weird, man. It was a weird time, like sitting around in circles, talking about your feelings in front of people you don't know, and like, and it's like on AA meetings, and like people just start, like this community of people that no, they didn't know existed. <clears throat> people go up the front of like this room and talk about their hardest things in their life i'm sitting there going what the fuck's going on yeah. where am i like how do i get here um so when you look around the room is it like how you perceived it to be or was there like oh this guy just i wouldn't even think um he's there's a word alcoholic i don't want to like read yeah, yeah 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 or like the kind of people in there yeah yeah so that was my biggest thing to stick around like fuck i'm not i don't want to call myself like a junkie or anything like that i said i had a lot of issues with alcohol and drugs for a long time but like yeah you walk in there people just you wouldn't even know like normal looking people there's some people in there that's like really like, you know, wealthy, successful. There's obviously a range, like high, low, like life, mm. but people mm. talk about normal stuff and like big issues, small issues, everyone's issues are their issues, you know what I mean? Um, just so I open like, I'm like, people talk about this shit, like in front of other people they don't really know. I'm like, this is crazy to me. Is that easier or harder? I feel like that'd be easier. Yeah, I don't know. Like, but then you tell telling strangers about your shit. Like, and so like, I, I remember my first meeting I went to, I got asked to share, like you got up the front of this room and I'm like, Lights are on me, like I'm not a good public speaker. I've gotten better since, but like I'm just drooping in sweat. Yeah, <laughs> 40 people, I'm like- Profusely sweat. Like, well, how many 40, over, 40, 40 people? 40, 50 people in this room. I'm up the front. Some of them are in a circle and some of them are like out the front. I was like, oh, and I just said to myself, I'm never gonna say no, I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone. I need to talk about this shit. Went up the front, like looking around, like stunned mullet, like looking like I got out of a sauna, like didn't know what head to say. Roll, head <laughs> roll. Like, you don't know what to yeah. say. You hear people say it, but I didn't know how to speak about my own issues. So. Do you have to do the- um, Hi, my name's Liam, and I'm a. That was the that? thing that killed me the most. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like, cause at like, the first, I was like, I'm, I'm in denial. I don't have that much. No, I'm, I'm Liam. I'm, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm an addict. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like, it was fucked, man. It was hard. Was, but then you got better and better. You talk more and more, and you sort of, um, yeah, like, uncover more of your issues. You had a pretty tough conversation uh, with your coach. What yeah. made you want to tell him straight away? And we've talked about coaches as almost like father figures. Mm. And I associate a father figure with someone that can like discipline you and show you love. And I think that's why we always associate coaches as father figures. Yeah. What made you want to tell him straight away? Well, leading up to that, I remember a couple of meetings at training and JD was talking, like, I think it was a couple of stuff going on with the other players, like, uh, you know, talking about the, like, the, the trajectory of most, a lot of NRL players, like, you know, they live a certain life, they create bad habits when they're playing, um, you know, about alcohol, drugs, gambling, cheating on the miss, all that shit that comes along with the, you know, the stigma of footy players. And then they finish their career, they don't have the money coming in, everyone leaves them and then they're just a mess, you know? Mm. They don't learn how to be good people, they don't learn good habits in their playing career and obviously when they finish, they just, they're just like wild, in the wild pretty much, you know, and they just they really struggle. And that really, really resonated with me a lot. And then... I don't know, I got to this point where I was at like, my lowest point before when I was like, I need help. Like I was just, and I was reaching out. What do I do? How do I do it? Well, I need to tell JD if I need to go to rehab. Like, fuck, how am I going to do it? Then I got to admit that I, all my, uh, I got to admit that I've been doing the wrong thing. That was the hardest thing. Yeah. But that was the only step I could take to get the help I needed. So like, I called him up and I was in a, I was a wreck. I was like, JD, can we have a chat? Like, in a really, I was in a really bad way. I was really anxious. And he's like, yeah, mate, everything you're good. I'm like, no, not really. Can we have a chat? Can I come meet you? When I met him, I was, you know, told him where I was at. And the first thing he said to me was like, man, I'm really proud of you for asking. Like, 100%, we support you 100%. And I just went, what? Mm. That felt like the biggest relief? Like, the mm. biggest relief. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I was like, didn't understand it. Like, I, everything I built it up to be, you know, this huge thing. Like, and he just went, bang, that's mate, that's awesome. I'm proud of you. We mm. support 100%. And I was just like, like a light bulb moment. Like, fuck, that's first step. That's number one step. What was life for you guys like? Because obviously, good mate, you're seen as like a <coughs> sort of a tough guy within in the game. <laughs> but to sort of come off the field, see your friend go through that, and just sort of have to soften yourself and accept it. What was it like to be yeah, his friend? It was pretty. It was pretty hectic, to be honest. Like, so you, you just don't know sometimes. Um, like, obviously, I, I was seeing him go through a bit um, as soon as he's done his knee. I remember. I still remember, like, very clear that. Um, rocking up to the game and what our um, head performance had at the time had said, hey, mate, I just want to prepare you. But night he's done his ACL and my heart, I remember my heart sinking. Oh, yeah. um, and he goes, I just need to tell you, obviously, you've got to prepare for a game and that. But um, 
So I remember going in. He was. What is a head of, head of performance? Yeah, he might, have ruined, he might have half ruined the performance that game, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. um, well, I was obviously going to find out. So <laughs> yeah. um, I remember walking in um, and seeing him, and he was in a you know, bad way. He's obviously trying to be in his best spirits as possible. I remember the doc giving him the doc. Oh, the doc. Mate. Obviously, it was so much pain, bro. The doc gave him anti-inflammatories <laughs> and pain relief. Pain relief. Doc, I'm not playing. Give me, yeah. give me trammies. Give me something. Yeah, yeah. Just knock me out, bro. And then, like coming home in that, um, and I remember him getting surgery, um, and we had to swap rooms because he was upstairs oh, and okay. couldn't really get upstairs. So he stayed in my room, um, and there was a time. I don't know if you want to, about the uh ambulance oh mate uh i had no idea like i had no idea slept through this whole thing but he was in so much like excruciating pain i slept through this whole thing ambulance all the ambos had come to the house took him to hospital um obviously check on him and they couldn't really do anything for you could they yeah that was where was the pain coming from just your knee bro i wasn't sleeping that was when i was like i was on prescriptions that's when I was probably on my big struggle that I started. Like prescriptions, I was out of the drugs. I wasn't sleeping. I'd like three or four days. What I'd prescriptions were you taking? Oh, like I was on endones. I yeah. probably popped a few Valiums in there. Yeah. Other, other drugs and stuff. And then I hadn't slept for yeah, three or four days. And I was having psychosis. And I was like, fuck, I was just like hearing voices and shit. Fuck. Yeah. Man, and then crook as. I woke up in the morning and he told me like, oh, I went to hospital. I was like, what? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep through a hurricane as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> like last night. Just last got his eight hours kip out. We'll start and breaking the house, driving fucking 12 hours sleep. Wake up, nothing's here. Whatever. And I, I, do sort of like, I do sort of remember him kind of saying to me, like, yeah, I'm not in, not in a good way. And that sort of like rattled me a bit. And I was like, well, well I don't, even, don't really know what to do. Because as a man, like, um, especially me, emotionally, I'm not very in check. <laughs> no, I don't, don't do good with emotions, so I, I don't really. You'd be surprised, but a lot of guys don't. Yeah, man. exactly. Especially now, and that yes, I didn't know like how to like be there for him or say ask if you're alright. I tried to, but I didn't know like if he'd want that. And then I remember him calling me saying he was going to rehab, and that was pretty tough as well because we were rooming, we were roomies at the time, and I was like, shit, this is like a serious problem. He's actually really struggling and stuff like that. Remember him getting out. Uh, I went to his graduation. That was uh, it. Was pretty cool. And there's one thing he probably won't say that he should be proud of. Um, he's the only one out of his group, out of the rehab group, that hasn't relapsed yet. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So he's um, yeah, obviously the only one that hasn't relapsed, which is something to be proud of. Because mm. how many people are in there? It'd be I'll ten plus. Like 20, 30 people. Yeah, twenty, through. thirty people, and, and he's the only one. Plug, get out early. We went through about four chicks in two days. I want to say quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it was hectic, bro. But once he got out and he started to work on himself and started to find out what he would like to do, and I was feeding off his energy, like he was asking me if I was okay, and we'd have we'd, we'd sit down and have a chat, and do all that stuff, and not all the time, but very, I suppose, just enough, eh? Hey? Yeah, just, just enough. Check-ins. Yeah. yeah, he was always checking up on me, and I didn't even. I suppose well, I've got problems, but um, <laughs> I wasn't the one that just sort of. Yeah, I was the one that you know didn't just get out of rehab, but yeah. Um, so it was more we were we were actually having conversations about life and in general life, and um, it's actually pretty cool to think back that you know he sort of he wouldn't know this, and I'm not bullshitting when I say this just because it's on camera, but he sort of changed the way you know I think about life and go about it and checking up on my mates and um as i said mate i was trying to feed off his energy as well and then obviously him getting out of rehab that sort of made me think well you know, i obviously love to have a beer and enjoy that part but i'd i'd always said that i don't want to be the one to make him relapse like that just oh, wasn't okay, non-negotiable yeah. for me and didn't want him to be around it obviously I, i'd go out but i said to him um i did say to him if you're ever going to like have a beer in that I'm not to be around. I do not want to be around you because I know for a fact I'll sort of be the one to blame myself and people will blame me for that. Yep. So I tried to steer him away from that. I would come home, you know, hung over and that. That was, that a was time. a blessing for me, bro. Yeah, that yeah, makes I you like, feel I'll better, eh? Like hey? 5.30, 6am going for walks. I come home, he's dead on the couch until about midday. <laughs> Just Uber Eats, Uber Eats, sleep. We go, fuck that. What yeah. am I missing out on him? There was a time. <laughs> there was one cruel. time I come home and I was, I must have been really loud 
or he lay in the lounge room and he, uh, he couldn't say he's not a good sleeper at the best of times. And he come into my room <laughs> angry as. Next was, door, banging on door. Yeah, yeah you want to sleep, bro? You want to sleep, bro? <laughs> and they were taking a photo of me and I was just, I look like death. Um, but then thinking like, fuck, I, I didn't want to be the one to, you know, have alcohol or shit like that around him. So yeah, um, it was hard to see, but then again, like it's pretty cool to see him now, that how far he's come. And um, it's pretty, as a mate, you, you're proud. Fuck you, Nelly, mad. No. Um, what, what's a couple of the couple of things that you've taken out from rehab that you do every day now that keeps you in check? Because um, I, I always see you take photo of your, of your socks and stuff. Like, yeah, is that just a little reminder? So I, was like, yeah, I was like spreading positivity. I really, I, I really um, choose what I consume on social media. I think you talk about it a lot, like what you consume, what you look at is what you sort of feel. Mm. I like cut out all the shit. I try and stuff all the reels and all that kind of stuff. Look at positive, like positive um, content, read books, walk, like just sort of keep busy in good ways. Mm. I was going to a lot of meetings at the start. Now I'm probably a bit too, I'm, a lot, I'm very busy these days, but... Um, <laughs> Also, like, started giving back was, like, a big thing they talk about. Yep. So, like, I started feeding the homeless every Wednesday or every Wednesday I can get there every second week, which was a really, like, big eye-opener. Like, you think you got, you know, you think you got problems, you think you got going on, and people that, like, struggle to find houses and, and food and that kind of stuff. It's a, just a bit of a perspective change. And you talk to people with, like, that kind of scene. It's um, it's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, for sure. And then um, and another guy, like, randomly, like, I sort of share my story and then someone sort of come to me, like, oh, my husband's really struggling with alcohol. Are you able to like have a chat to him and see if you can you know help him? I was like, what? The f Imagine like six months ago, someone asked me if I can help him get off the piss. I was yeah, like, You're talking to the right guy. So, <laughs> so I said, this guy was like, you know, struggling and had a tough time, and now he's like two and a half months sober. So that sort of for me like gave me, uh, like gives me back what I want to need. Mm. Like help this guy get sober. And now we're good mates. And it's the best feeling, eh? Mate, it's amazing. Yeah, we oh. started we started a business, me and this guy. Uh, are you? Yeah, it was oh, like, sick. Yeah, sick. Um, one of like my very first podcast I did was with Travis Young, mm. and he talked about the time he tried to commit suicide, and he was writing his son a suicide note, mm. and he ended up in rehab. And I still get messages today from like partners or or guys that have gone to rehab from that single podcast. So. Yeah, like, keep no, spreading the message. Crazy. You'd be surprised how how common it is. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. I couldn't like when I started getting those messages after I I, um, re I did that story. It was crazy, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I remember watching an interview with you when you were about to leave the Titans, and I can see you're an emotional guy the way you play the game, and obviously you'd be filthy you left the Titans. <laughs> but what, what's the expectations coming from a team like the Titans, where respectfully to the boys, you're not expected to do too much. Coming down to f Sydney, South Sydney. You got a good team. You got Wayne Bennett. You're expected to win. What was the clear differences coming from Goldie to here? Oh, I'm trying to think back. Hey, it was there was a lot. You like, never wanted to leave, eh? No, nah, I I was so in my comfort zone. What did you it, do with spoons? In all honesty, <laughs> no, nah, only one one. <laughs> only one one. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> mate. Um, like looking back. My last year there, we we won like ninth, six eh? on the trot. Yeah, we yeah. finished ninth. Just you know, bees dick away. But um, there was a lot of factors. I was in my comfort zone up home. I didn't want to leave. And then the opportunity arose to come down to South with Sammy retiring. I remember getting a phone call from both JD and Wayne saying that they wanted to get me down. And this was midway through negotiations with the Goldie and tigers cool. um and south sort of popped down to nowhere and you see the i saw the obviously the squad the coaches um the club what it's about it's rich rich history i didn't really know too much then but obviously now being at the club learning about it, it's a pretty rich history mm. and so much the club's been around forever um you know factors were there was a lot of i suppose one where i thought i'd you know, win more games and potentially you know, go all the way. Um, and then also, South just refused to give up, hey? Like, they refused to give up. They felt, that would feel nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and as a human being, you just, you want to feel wanted as a person. And I felt wanted at this club and I couldn't say no to them. Um, you know, I had, they flew up, um, flew up, come and see me, had a meeting, my, my best mate's mum and dad house. Um, sold me you know first of all he 
I don't know if he was just trying to sell me this. It was Shane Richardson. He goes, mate, just got off the phone to Rusty. He's telling me he wants to get you down and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was, was obviously yeah, the oldest chicken in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the Rusty card, that was pretty cool. But then, <laughs> Does he go to his farm? Uh, nah. Well, they no really want someone. Like, they can take Rusty. Yeah, they take that that the Rusty's I've heard about the farm. Yeah, like, that that yeah, only like, only one percent of Chelsea. Didn't Sammy stay there? Oh, yeah. They're best mates. Best mates, yeah. And then... Um, I was in my comfort zone, you know. I thought, you know what? I'm s this club wants me so bad. I just I can't say no to them. And then looking at the that time, then I only knew uh, Wayne, JD, Gags, and Sewer at the time. Yeah. Well, they're the only four people that I knew well at the club. Didn't know this Derek. <laughs> Didn't know you Didn't know like anyone. And obviously like played it. yeah played against them. <laughs> Um, but I come down, it was the best decision I ever made. I was getting out of my comfort zone, coming to somewhere new. Um, I didn't just expect to come down and, you know, say start. I, I, I sort of put two and two together, how good Ken Murray is, um, and the pack that they had. I, I sort of knew that I was going to come off the bench and mm. I was more than happy to do that. Like I was, I was excited for that challenge and the start, as though the I starting can play a bench my, really matter anymore. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's changed so much. I feel as though I can play 60 now. Like, yeah. You play 40, 50 minutes. It doesn't matter how you play, you're yeah. playing it anyway. I like. feel as though I can play, I play my best footy, footy off the bench. You know, you get those big boys, a junior and Hame, perfect example, take the sting out of the game for mm, me. I can come on and boy, yeah. just have fun in a way and, and bring energy um, be aggressive and, and Tommy play my goes game. For us now. Like, you come with the back fence. Bro, he's on fire, on bro. The he's he's on one of the best middles, mate. The bench, you know, back in the day, he's like been a bench, so you consider maybe like a bit less than, but like it's just a different role these he's days. He's been so good he's off the bench, time, yeah. yeah. But fact is, you know, it was the club didn't give up, and, and I wanted cash, to win. Hey. You told me more guys, um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Wasn't much more, I was, yeah, <laughs> I was doing that, yeah, yeah. yeah. it wasn't much more. Should. It's not as what it's not what say. What the media call? made it out to be. Yep. Yeah. But never is. Yeah, never nah. is. Yeah, it's it's some GST. Honestly, yeah, what they got nowhere GST near. From. <laughs> it was nowhere near papers, what they right? made it out to be. But um, yeah, it was just, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I needed to. I was so content up there. I needed to get away. I was, man, I was on the piss every week up there going to the Burley Pav. You needed to be on holiday. You were banned from all the pubs up there, weren't you? Good spot. Well, I'm banned from them now. They don't <laughs> like me there. But <laughs> are, you are you banned from there? Not banned, but... Gets kicked out more than I get kicked else. out Burley sober. Pav. That's no word of a lie. I get kicked out sober at the Burley Pav. I don't know how. <laughs> they good judge of character. You don't remember what you do drunk. Well, I do. <laughs> I do, but... <laughs> No reason to get kicked out. Anyway. I reckon it's just nah, not I'm too fault. loud. I'm too loud and fun. Too fun. You're too fun. Yeah, too fun. It's their fault, but they're, they're, they're missing out. They're missing out on you. Even at training, you can't have fun these oh, days. There are a few. Yeah, there's a couple you can't really go in here. You got a good crew though. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm ro rolling into the spicy part of the year for you, Origin. What's a, let's talk about well, if you get picked. Um, yeah, I'm sure you get picked. Of my opinion, Sean but Chance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trying to be all vibe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like this, you guys, I think it's the first time in a long time where teams almost match up. Like there's times where I've looked at New South Wales and I'm like, "Fuck, these that poor blokes are going to get yeah. pumped." And you guys have come back and won some series, especially over the past three years. What was it like winning a couple of those those special series? Yeah, it was pretty. It was surreal because um, had not winning a comp, um, stuff like that, to actually f you know, have that winning feeling of something. Um, I remember my first one in 2020. I was honestly, no one could take that feeling away <laughs> how happy I was. Yeah. Uh, I obviously definitely celebrated like we won as well. I had the oh. best time ever. I was there. The, I know. I know. <laughs> I do remember that. The first Apparently night. you were in pretty good form. <laughs> mate, the first night. I don't remember. <laughs> I Top don't, three I don't remember. lowest drunks. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was bad. I remember. Oh, I don't know if you should be saying this. I remember the f after we won, we all got on the piers and we, anyway, we got on the bus and um, went to Byron. And yeah, then yeah, I had yeah. no recollection being at a pub and apparently I was yelling, screaming, singing, all the above. Were you nude? Not at the pub? At the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> naked drunk every time. Yes. Certainly, so, yes. like, like the 12th beer, oh, I better get naked. <laughs> It's like a habitual, <laughs> habitual thing. I remember <laughs> passing out. That, I actually <laughs> passed out in the shower. Uh, and I remember waking up going, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> and I walked down to the boys and the first thing I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was excited. <laughs> I'm sorry for being a punish. I know I can be, but just that feeling of winning, just I was so excited and just didn't want to miss out on anything. So yeah. I was just, 
I was everywhere, bouncing off everyone. Um, but winning, it was pretty special, a pretty special feeling. Last year was crazy. And game three especially, I remember that. That was... It went so quick. That was the best game of ever. I think I've ever watched. It like, was entertainment wise. It was yeah, so interesting. It was Everyone so just crazy. Getting knocked out. Everyone was knocked out. I'm trying to remember came through. Um, I remember the atmosphere when Benny Hunt took that intercept as well. That was just, <laughs> it was crazy, man. And it, especially at Suncorp, that, I think that's the best thing as a Queenslander running out at Suncorp. If you got fifty two thousand people, just going absolutely mental. And obviously, you have New South Wales running out before you. And you can honestly feel the vibration underneath the stadium of just booze. Yeah. And then <laughs> Oh, so when, so when New South Wales run out, yeah. it's just like yeah. But then when you run out, you feel the grass vibrating and it's just man. It gives me goosebumps thinking about it. It's a surreal feeling and something I'll always remember. I always I always laugh when um like Queenslanders say like origin means more to us which in my opinion it does yeah. but then all the New South Wales people get like so it. cut about just it just don't eh? get it especially the players yeah they just yeah. don't get origin bro just don't bro. get it oh yeah those like, <laughs> stupid commentators feel good like I feel like I don't mind vice commentators in origin I think that's the way it should be unless oh, you're Ray, Ray Warren 100% I, I like it like but you know those feel good like, like Queenslanders want it more all this kind of stuff and, and it seems like over the years obviously you guys have had a lot more success well, recently those little moments, those big things that happen, the Queenslanders are there. But. I think Nico Hines summed it up perfectly. Like around the origin time, there's just so much passion that you know do have a hatred yeah. for the other state. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I won't talk to you for six weeks. When <laughs> yeah. <season's laughs> um, you played some with some pretty good sixes in Clubland and Origin. What's some clear differences between someone like Cody Walker and Cam Munster? Very similar in ways. Uh, we'll say that at the start. Very instinctive off the cuff players um but then i'd say munster is more cool calm and collected does <laughs> nothing phases him and cody as you've seen on field can get a little very heated um they're two differences for sure yep but very obviously both you know, great players instinctive players um cody's a lot more structured than you think than a lot of people think. Adam Reynolds told me that. He's yeah. just very, he's just very smart with his decisions. Very, he p always just seems to pick the right option at the right time, but very structured in some ways of where he wants us to get to and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Munster, as I said, mate, he's just, he's just big time, isn't you he? You don't know what he's going to do, honestly. <laughs> but then again, you don't know what Cody's going to do either. Um, he just, He's so instinctive. I, don't, I I physically don't know how he does it, eh? Because I'm thinking under pressure, like you got defenders origin, shooting he, out. Origin man, he just carved that. One the last year, the year before, he just was untouchable. The like, 2020 you know. was untouchable with that game one last year, and he was just stripping the ball in the game. Yeah, the origin line. games look make it look like kids. Look, look yeah. like kids around you. Know, Big like, game player, right? Big eh? game player, man. Just makes it look so easy. It's fun to watch from yeah, the outside. It must be a pleasure to play with. Yeah, absolutely. Very grateful that I've been able to play with you know the likes of those two for sure. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna write off some names. You guys just give me some, whatever first comes to your head. Campbell Graham. Just run us through him. Oh, he's a great tough bloke, man. Tough, tough. man. Yeah. Like as a player, person, person. Ooh. <laughs> soft. Soft. <laughs> <That's something. laughs> soft. Gentle soul. Yeah, is he? Mm, yeah. yeah. I've seen him knocking about the East a little bit lately. Yeah, he's a busy, busy man. He's a busy man these yeah, days, he's busy. Bro. He's really um, he's coming, into he's coming, out of, he's coming out of his show in, um, in all aspects of life. Yeah, yeah, good. So single at the moment, is he? Yeah, very yeah. single. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. can't like... Obviously, when all you boys are out, he's all big boys, but he's he's tall. He's tall, man. That's why he's stretched. He's stretch. stretch. Yeah. yeah, long thing. He's a big long thing. Little Lachlan right. Elias hanging off next to him too, so there's like yeah. a clear he's height like difference there. Really wide frame, <laughs> just a little tall. Yeah, right. He's a good. He's, cut, he's getting better looking every year. This uh, stretch. He's like, it's the hair. Your old halfback and captain Adam Reynolds. Uh, and obviously, you guys got a pretty good relationship yes. with him. <laughs> right, it was a, it was the best watching this game against you guys because obviously he knew everything about you. Oh, no, out the back, off, just picking off Cam's passes and that. intercepting and pump snake, bro. He pumped him too. <laughs> yeah, he fed him. Cam Murray. Oh, he fed Cam at the back or something? Oh, he yeah, knew what was oh, going he on. He told me about it, actually. He knew uh, what was going on. 
He, no, because yeah. he's, he's went down the right there and tried to pass back to the middle to run some shape. And he's seen it coming from forward and away. He, he was very good to tell me actually about that, Renault. Yeah, that's the best hit I've ever put on. I was like, when? <laughs> I didn't want to give him anything. I said, when? He goes, oh, on camo. I was like, oh, yeah, it's a good shot, man. Good. Well done. Well done. Yeah. What the legs tackle? <laughs> yeah. I miss Renault, man. He was a, he's the best little vibe every day he come to train and just like screaming at people, spraying people. He was the biggest punish, but like he had the best energy. Like he was the best, man. But speaking about like mental health and that. He's someone who just consistently is up all the time. He's mm. got to have demons. He's got to. Every he now and again, <laughs> once, once a month, he come in train kicking stones, bottom lip, and that'd be like his down week, what, down day for the month. And other than that, man, he's, he's annoying. All positivity. Yeah, um, he's come in this office quite a bit and just sort of hang out and chill. We used to have Feel some sorry for him. He's a good guy, man. <laughs> we used to have some mad chats, bro. I used to love talking to him. And he's like diverse a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, he really hey. is. Like, he's like, got a good mind, man. Yeah, it must be good and bad to see him doing well at the Broncos. He's fucking... He's taking them to the next level. Yeah. yeah, obviously really happy for his success because he deserves That'd it. That'd be a good GF, man, if you boys yeah. rock up there and they and they rock up there. Yeah, big <laughs> fan base yeah. too. <laughs> what do you say to him on the field and stuff? Just into him all the time? No, you do. Like We always have banter with him and stuff, but then like when we're off the field and mates and went and saw his mansion up there. Oh, he's Brisbane. got a house, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got a house, hectic. Yeah. Show us around. You have general chat, see how he's going. He's obviously... Telling, telling us how good it is up there and how much he loves <laughs> it up there. Can add some DST to a story, actually. <laughs> oh, has he got a bit of GST? Yeah, if you've got 12 cars, he's got 13. Like, <laughs> well, he's, he's captain of GST. If he made 10 green, he made 24. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah, that's probably his gambling story. Yeah, 120, lost 30 day yeah. before. Don't worry about that. If you're going to double bay, he's going to triple bay. Yeah, yeah, one of those, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot best for it. Yeah. Don't steal that one too, <laughs> training. Yeah, uh, that's uh, Last name on the, on the list, Nathan Peets. Oh, <laughs> angry. <laughs> a bipolar? Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've never seen someone stress so much as like a grown man, <laughs> eh? Really? No, oh, he's man. a good man, PT. I actually, I really miss him. What, miss him and his family. Yeah, we were Jade, doing, we were doing this fridge to fridge girl. one time and uh, Goldie over Christmas How and uh, he, he fridge come fridge off his well. bike. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that actually. <laughs> come off his bike, bro, for the next hour. He's like, I literally could have died. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh. <laughs> and, I, and I go, bro, you're nowhere near. And he goes, well, you look after my family, I own. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour, bro, sulking because he's come a, off a bike. A he's a stress head. He's a stress head. A oh, good yeah. man. I love him to death. <laughs> I've seen him midway through training and playing a game, <laughs> kick a ball over a fence and walked off the field and went up to the lockers and we had to finish training without him. <laughs> Remember when Cody did that? Yeah, Cody's yeah, done I've that. Yeah, I've heard Cody's got but one of those. Tommy, I, must be, I don't know what happened on the field. He was a bit rattled. Tommy did something to piss him off. Probably just breathed. <laughs> and he like, we were in the gym and Tom was wearing the wrong shorts. Like, and it never used to matter. But like, it was, I wasn't even training shorts. It was like, like gym shorts and like whatever brand. And in to, to, Cody's blowing up. Put some fucking shorts on. He's like, worry about your own backyard. Something like that. Just a little comment. <laughs> worry Cody's about like, your own backyard. Just worry about you all that. Or something like that. He's like, mm. stormed out, took his stuff, went home. <laughs> He got fined 500 he for it. He got fined for Fair enough. Mate, it training? was just like, it was so funny, man. Him and Tommy, like, they, they, Tommy just gets on his nerves. They really have a love-hate yeah. relationship. Well, lots of love, but then they just, I don't know what it is. Tommy just gets on his nerves, man. Sometimes you just got that no person. You got no patience for Tom. <laughs> none, hey, none. None whatsoever. It really grinds Cody's gears. It's actually, I love it. I love it so Cody much. Cody annoys the shit out of me, eh? Oh, you're, you're Pinches. I got bruises on the back of my arms from him pinching me, like, constantly, all day. Annoying. Um, your hammies and that, like those little yeah, water cold water all the time. But look at Ilias, you got like like a Taff. full on yeah. puddle of like bruises and taffy, like bit of ringworm for on top of it. Yeah, yeah. ringworm and <laughs> bruises, like beautiful mix. Yeah. <laughs> Man, no ringworm hair front though, clean. Oh, I got a PT story for you. Um, when he was at Para, um, they just signed Isaac Degoyce. <laughs> oh no, that would have went down well. Yeah, so all the boys are on the piss and like Normie starts layering up. He's like, Thanks, BA, and he's like. Thanks, B.A. What do you mean? Now, it's finding a decent hooker for once. <laughs> and, and team demo in front of all the boys and then five feet he's trying to fly. Bottom him. lip? Yeah, sulking. Gets home on the phone. Fuck you, wait till I see it training. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, another, oh, another one. Fuck, sorry, PT just fucking putting Rinsing your life story out here. Yeah, yeah rinse in here. here. Uh, it was this Bucks party and obviously his missus went on the hens and stuff and like got a stripper and stuff on. Yeah. But his, her nan was like FaceTiming it live and just and he just said, Nick. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. He's a stress in bro. He just said, Nick, what the fuck? <laughs> he took that pretty well, actually. Yeah. He took it better than I thought he was going. 
<laughs> oh, there's some bad jokes. Hey? But the boys like the missus goes away. Everyone's like, oh, she's probably getting hammered. Like, <laughs> probably such, not a going, footy, such a footy, such a footy thing. A physio, yeah. bro. A physio is a bit like that. A bit like, he's not a good guy. It's all bad. Anyway, he went away one time. Like, Mate, your missus. So. Ah, uh, last guy on the list, Toby Rudolph, and it sort of rolls in nicely to our next little extravagant. Cool. Yeah, he's a. He's a nice dude, bro. I met him a, with oh, Morello he's he's one time. Creature, Morello. Man. Yeah, I know Morello. Everyone knows Morello. Very interesting creature, Toby. Yeah. I love him, man. He's, he's what do you got on what do you got on him? Or what I got with dirt? Oh, he's all vibe. Can you tell the He's a child. He's like a grown child. Man child. Um Can you tell the doorstep? Oh yeah, I don't listen. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you if you're I'm in an hour, don't no, no, it's a sweet story. It's on oh, my body. Said, it's like, it's like body, live. Yeah. It's like live. But I remember one time he's told me a story when he was still at Souths and um, sat on that. Always tell the story like anything that they want him to do. Him up, always mate. say to him like you won't do it. He always has to prove himself like you won't do it. What what, what am I doing? <laughs> what, I run through a brick wall. Yeah, right, sweet. <laughs> so he always is getting to do pranks and that. And so like he's um, at one stage Sam stopped talking about they had a little tiff, whatever it was, and they come back from Queensland. And then Marubra, he's like, I said, I was like, oh, you talk to Sam? Oh, no, nah, you don't talk to me anymore. F fuck him, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, man, I want to shit on his doorstep. And so just goes, you won't. <laughs> and he goes, all right. And he went home, like, got a pussy bag, shat in the pussy bag, like, drove to Sam's house, put it in an envelope, <laughs> left it on his front door, like, everything like that. And then the best part, he started running off. His brother took him, started running off, jumped the fence. His brother starts beeping the horn. Oh, no. And just drove off yeah. and left him there. <laughs> Well, man, Sam's missus at the time found it. Big blow ups, bro. Oh, it was so quick. So, like, that sums he's him a up. full on man child, but he's the best bloke, <laughs> Best friend, best friend, like best yeah. mate. So, you guys got a podcast and stuff now? Yeah, or? me and Toby's doing um, it. What was the idea for that? Just uh, we, we talked about it ages ago, man, like years and years. Like, you know, things to talk about with mates. I want to do this. We'll do this one day. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Have you listened? No, nah, not yet. Uh, I see the micro content. Not yet, or were you ever planning on? <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen to it. I'll yeah, listen to no, it. I'll wait till Tommy gets on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good one with Sam did actually. Sam was good. Oh one. yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, one of those things and then I got out of like um you know, I started on this like personal development journey. I was like, I don't know. I, our main theme, like we talk a lot of shit. Our main theme is like we just want to encourage people, like, doesn't matter where you come from, like, just have a crack. Just mm. work hard enough, you can achieve shit, you know. Like we're we're like examples, like where I started, where Toby started, like, you know, we're living our dreams, we've done it. Um we want to sort of encourage people to do it. And then we just have like a lot of shit talk in between. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Couldn't Have imagine. you been on yet? No, nah, they don't want me. No, oh, we, we want not. him. We want him. Get the views out, bro. Yeah, we, we want him. We're about origin time when he's you when he's relevant. Him. When you're relevant. <laughs> when he's relevant, we'll yeah. get him on origin time. Yeah, you, is there <laughs> a budget there from the yeah, team? Yeah, no, no budget. It's too expensive. It's, <laughs> it's too arrogant. He just demands too much. Oh, <laughs> never. I'll do anything. Ah, uh, what's with the turtlenecks? Yeah, that's it. Talk, talk, talk us through it. See. You have to wait and see. You have to come on, mate. We'll oh, talk yeah. about it then. It's a bit of a. It's meant to be funny, I yeah. think. <laughs> no, it's funny, man. I'm Secret. sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just because you're not invited yet. Don't try and, yeah, don't try right, and trash salty. it, bro. Is it, is it hiding the ringworm? <laughs> 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 Maybe. Maybe. That's what we have to get Tommy That's on. Back if, of the Tommy neck, B comes bro, on. If Tommy B comes on, because he's got a big tag maniac. Well. <laughs> that's to get him like a mask. He's there, growing like, a fuck. Like, he's the <laughs> <laughs> He's, he ringworm's growing ringworm. He's got a farm. Get a little ringworm on the Rabbitohs um, logo, eh? <laughs> Sponsored by ring work. Sponsored by the ring. <laughs> um, so I see you boys moving off the field like a little bit differently. And like I love that because I've obviously transitioned from average football, footballer to business. Yeah. Um, how do you guys, are you guys starting to think about transitioning outside of football? And I know you hang around Morello, who's a successful business guy. Obviously, you've dated successful entrepreneurs. Is it hang around these different types of people that make you start thinking a little bit differently? Yeah. But you know what? You started making me think about it, to be honest. I had a lot of admiration for you from a distance, like watching what you did when you finished. You like, were there early, too. Yeah. Hey, you I, get a YKTR Yeah, shirt. I remember <laughs> early days, and I was like, obviously, when you like, when like that days, I was like, oh, fuck, who wants to do anything besides footy? Get off his nuts. And you were just like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, though, like, I remember watching. Guess me up, bro. Right? So, right. growing grass, like, fuck, he's just mad. You put out some mad content. I loved it. Then you'd obviously just fucking went gangbusters, man. It was like yeah. it was sick to watch. Made me start thinking a little bit. Didn't really know how to go about it, but it's definitely like hanging around with people like Morello and and um, you know my ex was really good at that kind of thinking. She was smart. I'm just hanging around with smart people that think differently, and I, I love the way people think. Like I was, yeah. It's an it's interesting way to learn. We're starting to get on the starting to get on the old side of footy players as well. Like we're 28 this year. Um, Obviously, hanging around Nighty, who's the busiest man in Australia, thinking about businesses and all different <laughs> ideas. But That's mad. I like it's that. It's actually, it's opened my eyes because, um, like, we do have to think about life after footy. And there is things that I've sort of put in place only really because he's starting to do all that stuff and made me really think. Um, 
I've actually you know spoken to people about trying to use that cane toad image as well maybe with a alcoholic drink about an opportunity about collaborating with someone um spoke to someone the other day this is going to sound really funny forex um well that'd be ideal that'd be the dream that'd wouldn't be it? ideal yeah. yeah spoke to my mate about he's probably gonna laugh at me about selling photocopiers like to biz big businesses and stuff like that and well, getting yeah, a commission like yeah, conica yeah. Monata, um yeah john yeah yeah, you know, to do yeah, yeah. yeah so um as a little bit of a side hustle doing some networking for him um and stuff like that obviously I, I don't know if i'd have to speak to the club about that no just, but no nah, you'd be fine well it's something that you know help, could be like, pretty good yeah making realize, good coin though. off it as well so is that just you printing money you right. just need your own photocopier yeah <laughs> <laughs> Raw the system. thought about radio um there's a few things there that i actually need to start getting onto about doing some radio stuff i'm good at, good at I suppose telling John Dorries. Can extend the answer. Bro, you might have cheese a bit, bro. You might have cheese. Can extend like, the answer. Yeah, can really, um, like, you ask him one simple question, he would talk about it for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so doing that and plumbing as well. I'm a plumbing apprentice. So I'd spoken to our career, car careers, career, careers uh, <laughs> lady about trying to get that done mm. and potentially, I don't know, making making a, enough that. money I to that. um that's the shit roll with that um courses yeah yeah oh trade, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right lpl we can straight trade in don't worry i'll have to pay him you watch no, you don't pay me <laughs> they pay me um <laughs> and trying to finish that to potentially open my own business and mm. hopefully it's going well enough to have someone just run it for me and jaws has got his hands back feet up <laughs> and pointing the finger you can just network and like Use your image and brand to sort of get in the door and yeah. Just I think that's the, bro. That's the way you've got to do it. That's why. That's, that's why I realized. Like, I never thought much of like myself as a player. Like, I want to play. That's why I play footy. But like, people love football players. So I want to talk to you. Uh, why you can use it in like not an expedient way. People get like, the same out of a, a, an interaction that you do. They don't want to talk to you. You get to talk to them, and you get it in because you play footy. It's really important yeah. to understand. Like, I think you've done that and use really your, well. Use your thing like I found for me. Like. And I, I used to find like when football players used to do it, it was so short term. I was yeah. like, cool, let's get a fucking kombucha fucking pack. Yeah, or and I was really get a free yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you start, yeah, you start thinking a bit bigger. Like you watch people like it's like watching people do it. Like yeah, and, and yeah, you know, I never thought about you. I only like people like you and other people you've met like they obviously have this massive business mind You're like what the fuck yeah just like just feels like another language or some stage then you can't learn then you start learning the language it's not hard bro podcasts and like it's like it's, you just start learning quick takes you away from footy as well get your mind off it mm. uh, which I think well for me and then night he's only two, two games back but I thought he was really good for us on the weekend yeah for sure and uh, I reckon it kind of reflects that he's doing so much outside of footy he's not really thinking about it um Obviously, you go to normal life stuff, but then it reflects on the field as well. Um, I just feel like when if you get your mind off footy, you go and do actual life things, and you, when you you come back to footy, you just solely focused on that mm. and have your tunnel vision. But it's always good to get away. I feel and I feel like and do different things and learn different things as well. That was the biggest thing I hit when I hit you know, injured. I was like, what else do I do? like? My image was at footy. That's what else do, uh, do I do? Who else am I? I had nothing else going on. That was like the biggest motivator for me. After I had to sort my shit out and go through all the stuff I went through, I was like, fuck. Now I'm gonna figure out everything I want to do. All the yeah. seminars, like all this stuff. Like really dove in deep because I'm like. Got so much time. Everyone thinks, "Oh, we got to recover." <laughs> Fucking lazy watching Netflix, like sitting at home playing games. Like I do all that shit. Yeah. But now it's like, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Movie Man over here, movie marathoner. <laughs> but, but yeah, you have a lot of time, and I know downtime is important. But like, we got so much time and resources. It's yeah, like, you don't it's really so much fun. Like yeah. talking to people, like interesting conversations. I love it, man. Are you on that dog app? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta meet with the muffin. <laughs> do ya? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Bro, oh, just, listen to this, mate. <laughs> mate I'm telling you, it's in busy man, busy yeah. man. Listen yeah, to this. I just signed up an ambassador to this. Uh, it's called the dog app, but there's a couple of layers to it. The dog app's like people like you and I are with dogs. You got a dog, you might we'll like get it. On it. It's like a good business model. It's like two bucks a month, so like you won't even notice it. But like it's AI uh, algorithm, like you sort of film the dog and you talk to it, ask it a question, like, do you want to go for a walk? And then like it'll sort of give you a response that the dog might say, you know, obviously ask the dog for financial advice or what. <laughs> It's favorite color is that kind of stuff, but like it's a cool it's way. Thinking. The thing around it, like, is people with PTSD, depression, loneliness with their dog, they want to be able to connect better and maybe have that, like, you know, if it's fake, whatever, if it's not exactly legit, but it's, a, it's an interaction with if they're lonely and like people with PTSD and they get that connection a bit better. Mm. And on top of that, they've got tech behind it. They want to, like, 
she's a massive advocate for like um, domestic violence victims and and and, and like uh, disadvantaged youth. So like that's that different connection thing to dogs, and they get to like have their best friend, they can talk to it, whatever it is. Like, and so it's, it's, a, it's an AI dog. It's a, no, the the actual app is AI what? generated tech. The dog is normal dog. Oh, okay. Reads like what the dog would say, like based on like its body position, tail wag, whatever it is. I don't know. It's obviously a bit over my head that way. Yeah. But yeah, it's like the dog talking back and you get to choose all these voices, different languages, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting, eh? It's really interesting, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was reading the study on PTSD and uh, what it was actually was, bro, is like well, people can't fall into a deep sleep. So when we go into REM, which is all the memories from our day flick into the back of our head mm. and because you can't go into a deep sleep, say there's something traumatic that happens, it gets stuck to the side of your brain. Yeah. So say something might trigger, it might be sound and that's how people get it. But a lot of people, they're starting to do studies over in like Netherlands and stuff Hitting them up with ketamine, like on the special yeah. K, then going through therapy, and it's been helping healing them shit. too. I heard like the same thing because it just unlocks it, like, like it just unlocks that part, and you can talk about it better, and it, you feel safer. And like I don't know, it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, they yeah it's pretty crazy. Those things. Fuck half of Sydney yeah. going through therapy at east. Mate, yeah. <laughs> 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 Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. your self-induced medication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. On a sad day night at Beach yeah. Road. No, I'm just yeah. medicating. I'm just, I'm just trying to do therapy. <laughs> therapy in the toilets, is it? 3 a.m. <laughs> um, last question. Can you boys want to comp? This yeah. year? Yeah. We will, man. Watch, watch your yeah. space. Sorry, Roosters fans. Watch your space. <laughs> <laughs> we'll win the comp. All right, boys. Um, so uh, start of the year. Yeah, just want to thank you for your time and jumping on. Obviously, welcome back anytime. Um, obviously, love you guys as people, but say this respectfully. Hopefully, you guys don't win. <laughs> Guys, thanks for your respect. Thank you for your respect for how this podcast fails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember when I was with me? Yeah, there's a good chance. Yeah. Don't have Mad Monday and Bondi too down at the bottom. Remember oh, last, remember or last my time house, or at my house. Yeah. Oh, oh never, again. never again. Oh, far out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and see you guys next time. <laughs>